In this quick tutorial, we're going to show you some of the options for importing 3D models. Throughout the main tutorials, we'll be bringing in clip art from the artwork that's supplied with the Aspire software. However, in this example, we want to show you, first of all, how you'd bring in a piece of that clip art and make it into a component, but also how you'd bring in a model from another design system or maybe from a, a clip art site where you'd got some off the web. Um, maybe in an STL format, DXF format, or one of the other 3D formats that's supported by the software. First, we're going to create a new file. I'm going to make it 12 by 6 by an inch thick and hit OK. And then we're going to come to the import component or 3D model. First one I'm going to import is just one of the standard CRV 3D files. This could be the clip art that comes with the software, or it could be a file that you created previously in Aspire. When we open one of these files, it's automatically going to be able to create that straight into being a component, which means I can manipulate it in the 2D. If we view that in the 3D view, we can see there's the 3D part of it. And as I change that in my 2D view, that's going to update in the 3D view as well. And I have all the options that have been covered in previous tutorials and are going to be covered many, many times over throughout the rest of the videos. Really, in this case, we're more concerned with bringing in a completely 3D object as an STL file format, which is essentially a meshed format. So I'm going to delete that component from our design. I'm going to come back to the import component or 3D model, and this time we're going to choose the file Porsche.stl. This is a file that was downloaded off the web. If we maximize the 3D view, we can see that not only does it have a top, but it has sides and a bottom as well. Unlike the files that we create in Aspire or the clip art that's provided with the software, this is not a relief based model, it's a full 3D object. Other things that are fairly typical on STL or mesh style objects is the faceting you can see. Many of these models are really created for animation or for games. And so instead of being smooth surfaces, they tend to have these angular faces in them. And that's something that is going to be a problem when you bring it into the software, unless you don't mind that in the finished part, or unless you spend some time in the sculpting tools cleaning it up. So what we do in the Orientate 3D model menu is decide which direction we want this part to be oriented so that we can convert it into being essentially a relief style model or a component. In this case, because we have essentially a solid object, I need to choose the direction uh, that we want to the part to come in. In this case, I would like to create a component that has a side view. So if I choose to go from the front, that puts it in the right orientation with my plane. If you imagine this is the plane once you get inside of the software. Now one thing I can see here that might be a problem is the aerial that we've got. Whenever we convert a model like this into being a component, it's automatically going to get rid of all the undercuts. And that means I'm going to end up with a steep vertical edge from that aerial. So in this case, it might be better for me to actually go from the other side. So if we choose back, then we can create a component from this side that doesn't have the aerial, and the aerial part of it will be got rid of. It doesn't matter that it's upside down, because I can correct that when we get it into Aspire. The next thing for me to do is to set the size. As soon as we come into this mode where we're orienting this 3D object, I no longer have any reference to the original size, other than to see the job dimensions down the bottom here. But this isn't going to respect it, it's just going to open it in the size of whatever the file was created in its original CAD system. So it may even be that this particular part could be the size of a real car. What we need to do is make sure we scale it down to be small enough to fit within our job area or to make it the size that we want to use it. In this case, I'm going to set this to be 10 inches. And with the model size um, here, I've got this option to lock the XYZ ratio set. And that means the uh, Y and the Z are automatically going to update too. So this is the smaller version of the model. If I want to, I might want to squash the Z down a bit. That's going to give me a pretty deep model. So if I uncheck the lock XYZ ratio, I might change that into a 2 inch, and that's going to squash the car down. And that still works for me. I still like the way that's going to look. It's still got enough detail. Next, I can choose the um, 
units that I'm working in and I have the option to scale it because the model may have come in in metric, it may have come in in inches, um, depends what the sending system created it in. Lastly, I've got to choose how that's going to relate to the plane. So how much of it is going to stick up and be part of the component? If we look from the side here and I move the slider, I can reduce or increase how much of the part is going to stick up above the job and I have options to align that to the middle there or to the bottom. In this case if we align it to the middle I'm going to get roughly half the car. Now it may also be in this situation that I don't want it to be an exact side view. I might want to just tilt the car up slightly so that it's coming towards us. The only way to do that in here is to use the orient model function here and what, how that works is if I hold the shift key down and I twiddle the view, the same as if I was just going to twiddle it to change the angle that I'm looking at it, it'll move the model. So holding shift, I click with the left mouse button and then when I actually start to move the mouse around you can see it's changing the orientation of the model. And as long as I keep shift held down that's going to keep updating that. And if you look now you can see I've tilted that up in space. So now what I'm going to get in the model is actually almost like a three-quarter view. And I could continue working with that if I wanted. I can keep changing the position of it within the part. As soon as I'm happy that what I can see in this view is what I want to be converted into a component, I can hit OK and it will go ahead and build a component for me. And we'll do that in just one second. The last option on the menu here, which is worth mentioning, is really if you're bringing in what effectively is like negative data. And by that we mean something that's maybe already inset into a dish or into some kind of recess. If I was bringing that into the software as an STL model or as some kind of 3D object that's supported within the software, then the top surface would essentially be flat and everything would be below the plane. In that situation it may be beneficial to me to say that I want to still get rid of undercuts but I want to keep the information that's below the plane in this case because I want it to represent that dished or recessed area. So if you're bringing in a dished or recessed part you're probably going to need to um, uncheck this option in order to get the data if it's an STL or other mesh format that Aspire supports. That being said we're now ready with this particular example to turn it into a component so if I hit OK, the software is going to go ahead, do the conversion for me, take me back into the regular interface. If we go to the 2D view, I can tile the two windows so that we can see what I've got, the grayscale there, and in my 3D. And if I want, I can pop up the component manager, and I've got all the same powers that I have on that if I've built it myself using the working model, or if it's an imported piece of clip art or something I've built before inside the software. We can take it, for instance, rotate it around, put it in the position we want it to be in, look down the z-axis. If we want, we can zoom in and we can actually see some of the faceting I was talking about, some of the triangles that are actually in the mesh of the design. Just to show you quickly here to finish this off, we could go into the sculpting tools and smooth some of those out. In order to sculpt on this part, I need it to be part of the working model. I can't sculpt a component. So I'm going to pop up the component manager. With the component selected, I'm going to choose copy into model. And then we'll just undraw our component. There we can see the yellow tinged grayscale of the working model. If we want to maximize the 3D view, we can zoom in towards the back wheel arch where we can see some of these triangles. If I go into the sculpting tools now, I could go in there make sure I don't have too big a diameter cursor and I can actually just start to rub back and forward over those in order to smooth them. Now you can imagine this could be quite a time consuming process but it is a very powerful way to clean up these models or to touch them up. In a lot of cases they may not be quite as faceted as the example you have here. They may have been created with a much higher number of triangles in the mesh. So to summarise, when we're importing a 3D model into Aspire, it's a couple of different choices. We can bring in one of the standard clip art formats, which could be a CRV 3D or perhaps a V3M from Vector Art 3D, and that will come in straight as a component and automatically be added to the component list. If I've got a full 3D object like an STL mesh, 
then I use the same icon to import it, but then it's going to take me into a separate um, change of interface so that I have the tools I need to orient that full 3D model to get the part that I want to be integrated back into the design as a component. That concludes the overview of importing 3D models and some of the options that are available for that.